Well, today is Vision Sunday. Somebody say vision. Oh, say it like say it like you got the Holy Ghost. Somebody say vision. Sunday. Well, you picked a good day to come to church. This is the first Sunday in June. And uh, man, listen to me. Let me tell you. Let me just say this first, uh, first and foremost. Uh, it, it is warm in here. I know. And we're working on that. We're working on some solutions. We're talking to the owner now about some uh, some different uh, ways we can cool this room off a little bit as we expand into the summertime. But uh, I'm glad to tell you guys that we just we just got a little bit more time in this place in Jesus' name. Yeah, just a little bit more time in this place. And so uh, before I get there, I just want to say to you guys, uh, this is an awesome time to be a part of the church. Let me say this to you. There is no greater, there is no greater cause to be a part of, to give to, to give your time, your talent, and your efforts to than the church. And so at the end of service, we'll take up an offering uh, like we normally do, but we'll wait till the end because I want to show you what we're doing and where we're going so that you can see what God is doing at Courageous Church. How many of you guys are excited to find out what's next for Courageous? The whole left side, you're happy, you're excited. I don't know, anybody on the right side, are y'all excited to hear about what God is going next? (laughs) I love it, I love it. Okay, so let's get into this thing. Before I tell you where we're going, I wanna tell you where we've been. Because I think it's important for you kind of to understand where we've been and what's gone, what's gone on with Courageous Church. And so we have, uh, we've been on a journey. We've been on a, a very cool journey. Hey, what's up, son? <laughs> My son is watching me on FaceTime. I love you, son. Yeah, everybody say, hey, Jalen. Yeah, my son is serving our country right now in the Navy, and he's in Washington State serving the country. Come on now. You can do better than that. He's, he's fighting for your freedom. Yeah, we appreciate you, son. Keep, keep building yourself. Keep doing your thing. Keep keeping us safe in Jesus' name. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> so let me share with you guys where we've been because this has been a cool journey that we've been on that I just want to give you some, some understanding. I know we've got some new people here, and, and the Bible says that without a vision, the people perish. And so I want to make sure that, uh, that, that we... You understand that this is a church that is full of vision. The Bible also says in Habakkuk 2 and 2 that we ought to write the vision and to make it plain so they that read it can run with it. And so I want to give you something to run with today, especially those of you guys are scratching and waiting and trying to like dig your heels into the ground. It's like, let me see, where are we going? Where where, where I need to put my hands at, Pastor? Where do I need to put my efforts? Where do I need to put my time, my talents, and my treasure? I'm going to show you today as we journey through this thing. So In 2019, we began learning about Tampa and the spiritual needs uh, for for living, uh, for more life-giving, spirit-filled churches here in the Tampa area. This is a city that is 80% unchurched. And so we began to pray and listen to the plan of God for Courageous Church for this city. And when God spoke to us in Dallas to move to Tampa, we had no idea what the name of the church was going to be at that time, and we had no idea exactly where in Tampa the church would be. God began to reveal to us as we just stepped with him and obeyed what he said. We had a true Genesis chapter 12 moment when Abram becomes Abraham, where God tells him to leave your country away from your father's house, away from everything that you've known, away from your inheritance to a land that I'm going to take you to. And when you get there, I'm going to cause your name to be great. I'm going to bless those who bless you. I'll curse those who curse you. You guys know the text there in Genesis chapter 12. And so we just obeyed God. We had no one and nothing to come here to. We had no relationships, we had no friends, we had no ministry, we had no churches, we we had nothing when we came to Tampa. We had everything in Dallas, everything was great in Dallas, everything was wonderful in Dallas, but God said, Tampa's the city I need you to come to. And when God spoke to us, we began to do research on the city and we found out that over 80% of this church is, 80% of the city is unchurched. That means that at any given, on any given Sunday, 80% of the people who live here are not thinking about church. And I'm not just talking about Christian churches like ours. I'm talking about all types of churches. I'm talking about any religious institute at all. So that probably narrows it down even more for Christians that, that, that even less people go to church. So this is an unchurched city. So we knew that there need to be more spirit-filled churches. And God gave us three specific things that we were supposed to do when we came to this city as we began to pray and ask God. God about how we should establish it. The first thing is that we were supposed to be a diverse church. Somebody say diverse. 
A diverse church is very interesting because diverse churches really don't exist with African-American leaders like myself. Can, can, we, can I just give you some stats real quick? Can I give you some real stats real quick? Because this is a miracle that you're sitting in right now to see. Look, just look around the room. I just want you to look at the diversity around this room right now, our diversity that watches online. We have thousands of people who watch on YouTube from all around the world. We're like, who are these people and why are they watching from Fiji? Praise the Lord that they're watching Jesus in Australia. But God is doing something. He's put a spirit of diversity on this church. And so here's the, here's the stats, okay? Age, when it comes to age, race, and economics, the way that you determine if a church is diverse or not is if 20% of the makeup is a different race or culture than the lead pastor. And so when you look around Courageous Church, you can tell that we have those statistics going on pretty strong. Listen to this. 17% of churches in the U.S. are considered, are considered to have diversity, and that includes the Catholic church and everything else as well. When you get down to the Christian churches, it's even less. Listen to this. Less than one-fourth of those churches are led by a black pastor, that's less than 5% of the churches in the nation actually represent the diversity that you're sitting in right now. And so this is a beautiful expression of what heaven's going to look like when you get there. Oh, come on now. Listen, we're going to have us some, some, uh, some, some, some tres leches. We're going to have us some soul food. We're going to have us some, some butter chicken. We're going to have us, some, listen, it's going to be a party in heaven when we get there. And if you don't like other races and nations, this might not be the church for you. I'm just saying. I say that with my back turned, but I mean it. Because we believe in diversity here. You're going to see it in every expression that we have. Diversity is considered 20% or more of the congregation. So this is something that God gave us a passion for. And in the small amount of time that we've been alive as a church, we've seen that diversity. The second thing that the Lord spoke to us very clearly about is that we are to have an encounter-style worship experience. Encounter-style worship experience. What do you mean by that, Pastor Green? I mean that we don't come to church to patty cake the Lord. And I know that sounds cute and cuddly, and I, oh, yeah, okay. But, but here's my thoughts, and here's, the, here's, here's what I believe. I believe that when you go to a Buccaneers game or when you go to a playoff basketball game, nobody has to tell you to get loud. You just get loud because you, you, you believe in that team. You Listen, you, you, wearing, you wearing all the colors. You got, listen, you got, paint, you got paint on your face. You, you're not even touching the field. You, you, you took your shirt off, put a big old B on your chest, belly out, everything. You screaming and hollering, losing your voice. And so I, I said to myself, if, if we're going to build a church, Lord, what type of worship do you want to see us have? He says, encounter style worship. Why encounter style worship? Because when you have an encounter with God, you can't deny it. When, listen, people will forget our sermons all the time, but they will never forget an encounter with Jesus. And so the goal for our worship and we're still moving in that direction, and we're, made, we're making major progress. I just love what God is doing in our worship, but we're not even quite where, where we need to be quite yet. We're still on our way. We're still heading that way where we can see an encounter where, where the worship is so incredible as far as the presence of God and all of us leaning into the presence that, that, that the message is just extra. Come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah, the message is just icing on the cake. The worship just took us to a place where we were fed so well in the worship encounter that now everything else is just overflow in Jesus' name. Somebody say overflow. overflow. Yeah, and then the third thing that God made sure that we stayed focused on is, this. listen to this, I want you to hear this, this is future speaking here, is we are to be a multi-site church. We are to be a multi-site church. And so let me give you a vision for the next uh, 20 years. So can we go 20 years? Let's just, somebody say 20. By the year 20, 2045, it's our goal to see at least seven Courageous Church campuses around the world. Seven Courageous Church campuses around the world. That is four campuses within the Tampa Bay area itself. Two campuses abroad. And when I say abroad, I don't know where abroad could be. Abroad could be Aruba. Abroad could be the Cayman Islands. The, abroad, my wife said Hawaii. I don't know. I hadn't heard the Lord say Hawaii yet in Jesus' name. That's a lot for Jesus to say, Hawaii. <laughs> My wife is praying, Jesus. Should have bought a Honda, but I bought a Kia. Say, Hawaii, Jesus. Uh, but who knows? We might see a courageous church in Europe. We might see a courageous church in Australia. We might see a courageous church in South Africa. Who knows where God may send courageous church? But one of the things that I know is that my wife and I both have this international anointing that sits on our lives to touch and reach people of all races and nations. And so this church is not to be confined just to the grounds of the United States. We are called to redeem the world. Come on, somebody. 
And so, 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 so I, I, I'm excited because I can see it because I got vision. And so by the year 2020, 2045, this is our goal to see. And then, of course, we have one online campus and our online campus. Let me tell you guys, let me brag on our online campus because as we started Courageous Church, we actually started this in the midst of a pandemic and racial divide in a political year. It was just nuts. I don't know why we did this. This was just the craziest, this is the craziest thing we've ever done in our lives. I'll just tell you, just be honest with you. I told people all the time, I say either we're crazy or courageous. I think it's a little bit of both. And, and God knew what he was doing when he planted this church. So we started out on the journey of church planting. And the, the model was to go six months with raising a team, meeting with people face to face, having coffee, doing launch parties at, at restaurants and all of the things that they teach you how to do to have a successful church launch. And then they shut everything down. We made the announcement in February and the whole country shut down in March. And so we were faced with a choice to make. And we knew that the choice that we were going to make was what God was leading us to do. And many times we try to take our foot off the accelerator and say, okay, God, maybe we do this some other time. And he would push us and say, build my church. Build my church. Pivot. My wife, listen, we, we had to pop which means that we pivot on purpose. And so we had to change the way that we did church, and we had to change the way that we saw it, and we started doing online meetings. We started meeting with Zoom with people. Hey, you got your coffee? I got my coffee. All right, let's let, tell us your story. I mean, it was just crazy how God was sending people to connect with our team, and we began to give digital responsibilities out to our entire dream team. And so it was nuts. We launched the church in June. Your, the, the true birth date of Courageous Church is June 28th, of 2000. So, so that is absolutely amazing. We're coming up on two years now. And so this is absolutely amazing because as we come up on this era, this makes two years that Courageous has been in existence today. We launched CC as an online only campus church in the midst of the worldwide pandemic of June 28. Boom, I got it right. I didn't even see my notes. I know it because I'm a part of the vision. This is what God did. This is how he built his church. And so we started filming services, guys. We started getting in studios and figuring out how to master the audio. I'm telling y'all, we learned stuff we had no idea how to do. I'm telling y'all, I know more about equipment and all kinds of stuff that I knew nothing about two years ago. I know camera. I know black magic, so I know what type of SD cards they need inside of them. Now I know what type of lenses they need to be able to do. It's just been absolutely crazy how God made us shift things on how to start this church because he wanted Courageous Church here. And so we started building online, and we led up to six months online, and we finally launched our first physical campus at the Brian Glacier Jewish Community Center on January 10th, 2021. January 10th, 2021, we we did the unthinkable and launched uh, and launched in-person services at the Brian Glacier Jewish Community Center and so in the Soho area of Tampa. That's how a lot of you guys heard about us. But let me tell you how difficult this was. We did it at the height of the pandemic, where there was no mask and mask required, uh, vaccinated. No, there, actually, there was no vaccines actually available when we launched the church. It was absolutely mask required at the place that we were at. So we had people mad they had to wear a mask, and we had people glad that they we were wearing masks, and they had mad and glad and then glad again when we. Took the mask off, and then the people left, and the people came back. It was just nuts. It was crazy. We just, I don't even know why we did this. Colton, why we do this? It's crazy, right? <laughs> yeah. And so, so we pushed through all of those things, and we begin to see God move. We, we saw, we saw oh, almost 50 people baptized in the midst of this crazy thing. I'll never forget when we did baptism, we were like, well, what are we going to do with the faces? Like, we can't touch the faces because it's the pandemic, so what are we going to do? I was like, buy a bunch of towels. This is what we're going to do. We're going to buy a bunch of towels. I'm going to put each towel individually over their face. I'm going to take them down, put the towel on, put the towel down on the ground. I mean, we figured this thing out because we knew that we had to build the church. <laughs> Am I telling the truth, babe? Not to mention set up and tear down every single week. That means that all of this equipment that you see, th let, me, let me just brag on our team for a second. Our dream team is so incredible because they make this room suitable for you to come in for worship, and they do it faithfully. They have done it faithfully for 18 months. This, let's, let me, no, hold on before you, before, you, before you holler for them. Most churches get to set up the day before. Most churches get to set up on Friday or Saturday, and they come in on Sunday. They can be neat and clean and all that kind of stuff, no sweat, until the end of the service where they got to tear down. Our team sets up on the day of. They put all of this gear together this morning, every single day, for the last year and a half, and they have made this room suitable for you to come in and have an experience with Jesus. Can we make some noise for the dream team? At Car come on, you can do better than that.
Talk about building the church. Talk about building the church. These guys build the church every Sunday, tear it down, put it together again, over and over again. Volunteers, our dream team, absolutely incredible. We'll do anything for our dream team. And so we stayed at the Brian Glacier Jewish Community Center. I call it the Taj Mahal. And uh, we, because we had so much, it was just crazy how much room that place had. And then, then the Lord, after our year was up there at the JCC, our one year, see, I'm going to tell you something too. Your pastor is a partial CEO, partial pastor. So I put my CEO hat on during the week, my wife and I, and we negotiate deals and contracts and all kinds of things because that's what you got to do. I learned real quick, you can't just be a pastor. You got to be a CEO and you got to learn how to do business. And so we did business wisely at the JCC and we signed a one-year contract in the midst of the pandemic and they gave us an unbelievable rate to be there for a full year uninterrupted. So we got 12 months worth of services at the JCC, and then events started coming back, and then our contract ran out, and then uh, people started paying more money for the space. So we was like, you know what, we're going to be good stewards of God's money, and we're going to find us a new place that we can do church in. And so in February of this year, we moved into this place, which is, this, this is the Rialto Theater. And, and this came up for us because our friends who were here before us called Local Church, they were having church here in the building, and we, we knew that this, this place could house church, and so we decided to move the church here so that we could do what was next in the next phase and the next season of Courageous Church, and God has been so gracious to us as we've been here. This location here is the Rialto Theater, that place, okay, yep, 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 absolutely. And so, so this is where we currently are after after two years of doing Courageous Church, and this is a beautiful thing that God has done already in such a short amount of time. Now, let me tell you why we need a building. Can I, can I tell you why we need a building? Let me give you why we need a building, okay? We need a place to do real discipleship. What I mean by real discipleship, I mean, I mean face-to-face, having you in the building, teaching the gospel, teaching the text. I need a place where we can do that type of discipleship in our church because we have gotten beyond the the, the place of doing Zooms and all those kind of things. And let me just say this. All I want to do is Zoom, 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 Zoom too. I'm cool with that when we have to do Zoom. But but I remember when I learned the Bible, being in the room where where the Bible was being taught, there was, there was a transfer that happened. The anointing activated me when I learned about the, the, uh, 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 the tabernacle. The anointing hit me when I began to study the scriptures and understand and sing Jesus in the Old Testament. The anointing hit me when I began to study the scriptures and understand the Greek and the Hebrew words and the translations and learning how to use lexicons and different things and concordances. The, the anointing hit me as I began to dig deeper in my faith and really have a foundation that kept me grounded when the world around me was always changing. And so we need a place where we can do real discipleship. The second thing we need is a place, uh, a place without time constraints. My goodness gracious, have mercy on my soul. Somebody, uh, the dream team was like, amen, pastor, A to the man. Because what y'all don't see is that we have to be out of this place by 1 p.m. every Sunday. So that means, that means that. Mm, Thank you, Holy Ghost. That, That means that at times we can't do the altar calls that I desire to do. We, we can't have people come forward and I can just labor with them at the altar, lay hands and, and speak over them. My wife and I pour out to them and be able to do different things like that because this is the type of church that God called us to build. We are not supposed to be a church that just speaks a message, have people raise their hands and go home. This is a church of impartation. Somebody say impartation. This is a church of impartation, and impartation comes from the laying on of hands. See, we taught a doctrine in our church, and I'm glad. I hope you were here. If you weren't, you need to go look it up. Look it up on our our YouTube. We did a message called the doctrine of laying on of hands, and we help you understand the power, what happens when hands are being laid on you by spiritual people, spiritual leaders in your life. They activate the gift of God inside of you, and it stirs the gift that God placed inside of you. And so we believe in that. We believe that deliverance happens. We believe that sick people. The Bible says that you should lay hands on the sick. If you find sick people amongst you, call upon the elders and have them anoint them with oil and lay hands on them. This is Bible. And so we need a place that we can do those types of things in. We need a place for our worship team to practice. Do you know that we pay for a place to practice every single week? 
We have to pay for a place for our team to practice every single week. We have to pay for a place to have dream team meetings when we want to meet with our team members. We have to pay every time we come to anywhere. We, we don't get to this place Monday through Friday. This is just Sunday, this building here. We need a place to host services and events for our next, for our next gen teens. Listen, I'm ready to take ministry to the next level to, with our teenagers. And yes, we've already launched our middle school ministry and they're doing a phenomenal job. They're getting the gospel. They're getting Jesus. But man, there's some stuff I want to do. I want, I want to do some lock-ins. I, I want to do some fun stuff. I, I, I want to have a night where I, I can just speak into our teenagers or have a guest speaker come that can speak into our teenagers and impart in them and see depression fall off them, to see suicide fall off them, see all these things fall off them so they don't end up on CNN. Hello, somebody. See, we, we, need, we need real ministry so that we can see real life change. And so this is what happened when I was 15. I, I was in a real church that had real ministry for teenagers, and it changed my life. And so we need a place where we can do stuff like that. We need a place for offices and our staff because as this church grows, we're going to grow our staff and we're going to need a team because we're going to build your church, Jesus, and the gates of hell will not prevail. We need a place to train people for ministry. We have a real passion to train people. And what I see in this next season of Courageous Church is a place where we can train up the next generation of giant killers for the kingdom. What does that mean? That we believe in the fivefold ministry. We believe believe that the fivefold ministry is to be established in the earth. We believe that this is a place where God can establish the next generation of church leaders, pastors, evangelists, teachers, uh, uh, teachers, uh, 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 help me out, apostles and prophets. These are the fivefold ministry that the Bible speaks of. These are the bodybuilders. And we need a place where we can start doing things like that. We have the curriculum. We're ready to do it. We just need the place to do it in. And so we're believing that God is going to give us a place where we can do that. That's why we need a building. We need a place to host our dream team events because we pay to, to do those now. Thank God for a couple of kind people that are in our church that are helping us out in the last few months. Y'all know who y'all are. We appreciate y'all so much. You guys have no idea how much you're saving Courageous Church and pouring into the kingdom. Let's go, somebody. We need a place where we can leave set up for the following week. Hello, somebody. Can you imagine? Dream Team, can you imagine walking in a set room where all we got to do is pray? All we got to do is lay hands on seats. All we got to do is anoint the room. All we got to do is just get ready. Come on, somebody. I'm believing for that. We need a place where we can focus more on outreach and evangelism because right now our efforts are so concentrated on set up and tear down. And as soon as we get out of this season of set up and tear down, I believe that God is going to activate us with the people and the resource energy wise so that we can start focusing outwardly. We're in a prime place right now where there are so many lost souls around us. Armature Works is a, is a football field away that way. It is such a mission field where we can go and reach people. And I have a passion to reach those people for Jesus. I have a passion to raise up teams, street teams, evangelism teams, people who tell people about Jesus on the streets, winning souls to Christ right there in the parking lot. We want to be able to have a place where we can start focusing on that. And then we need a place. We need a place. Make sure you got the video ready, guys. Make sure the audio is ready, too. Because we, we, need, we need a place that we can call home. We need a place that we can call home. And Courageous Church, I am so excited to announce to you guys today that Courageous Church has found its new home. Check this video out. Courageous Church, welcome home. This is our new sanctuary, our new building, our new place to serve this city. And I'm so excited because this is what we've been waiting on. This is what we've been praying for. And finally, God has granted our prayer request by giving us a building that we can take ministry to the next level in. This place is perfect for the needs of our church. It's about 6,000 square feet total. It has adequate children's ministry space and of course enough space for us to service the adults that are coming to our church as well. This place is being used by our friends at Redeemer City Church currently and they're moving to a new location here very, very soon. And in the fall, we will be moving to our new building right here in the city. I'm so excited that God is finally giving us a place that we can do ministry on another level. Imagine the ministry that we get to do now that we couldn't do before. We now get to do midweek things. We have a place 
for our worship team to practice. We have a place for our team to get together throughout the week and do discipleship and build people in a way that we didn't have the opportunity to do before. God has truly answered our prayers and we're so excited. We cannot wait until the fall to move into this awesome facility and we're gonna do it all together as we move the vision further and faster because of you. Let's go, let's go, let's go! Let's go! Ah, my goodness gracious. Well, my goodness, it's been a long, long journey. Amen? Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. So let's talk about this campus. Let's talk about this campus because this is an exciting thing. First thing you need to know is it's right next door. Let me say this to you. Your pastors are very, are very strategic, and we are very, very uh, meaningful about what we do. And some of you guys are wondering, well, why did we come to the Rialto Theater? Because we had this place next door in mind when we moved here. And so we knew that this was a possibility for us to be able to get this campus next door. And so it sits in the next building over to the right. It's called, uh, it's called uh, Redeemer City Church. And uh, they are moving into a new facility, and they are supposed to move in at the end of July, beginning of August. And so we have 30 days to get the building to where we want it to be, and there's some things that need to be changed in that building before it can accommodate Courageous Church. So Redeemer City Church is a little smaller than us, and uh, they don't have as much gear as us, and uh, so they're just a little different. They're our brothers from another mother. I love, them to, I love them to pieces. Pastor Mitch, he's a phenomenal pastor. He's been pastoring for a while. But they're moving. And so we're going to take the building. And uh, I'm excited. Uh, so the first thing you guys need to know is that the early fall will be the time that we'll be moving in. Okay? Here's the biggie. We're going to move to two services instead of just one. So we'll give you guys two options. We'll give you guys two options to come to church. That'll be 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock. And so that's really important for you to know. Our dream team will now have a place, will now have a place to change, will now, will now have the chance to serve one service and sit one service. Let me say how important this is. We have people in our church right now that have to stay out in the parking lot the entire time to make sure uh, cars are parked. We have people that are in our kids ministry team and on our, on our CCK team that don't get to watch the service. They actually have to watch the playback. And so now we get to move into a phase where we can actually sit one and serve one every Sunday to keep our team more spiritually healthy. Come on, somebody. There will be no more set up and tear downs. Don't y'all get, I don't shout, but that's one reason, I, I will catch the Holy Ghost right there. The building is right next door. It's currently being occupied by our friends, okay? The current location needs some renovations to get it ready for Courageous Church. Let's talk about those renovations, okay? First and foremost, uh, can you do me a favor? Take me into, hold on, hold on, let's stay here real quick. Hold on, hold on, let's just stay, let me finish this. I'm getting a little excited. We need to increase the size of the sanctuary, so that's going to mean that we need to push the wall back where you saw uh, the cross on the wall. We got to push that wall back 15 feet into the warehouse of this building, okay, so that we can get more seats in this building. So that's going to allow us another 90 chairs to fit into the building so that we can do church adequately. And so this is going to really be a project, okay? We're already in negotiations with the, the contractors. We got it all set up. We're ready to go. And so, uh, so we're going to have to push that, push that wall back, bust it down, push it back so we can increase the size. We got to tear out the, the drop ceilings in the room. The drop ceilings uh, are uh, not becoming of Courageous Church. And so, uh, so, so what we're going to do is we're going to tear those ceilings out because they're too low, not just because of the visual, but because they're too low. We, we need a room that's a little taller, and we're going to take the ceilings up another two and a half feet, spray it black, and give us the opportunity to really, really do ministry the way that God has called Courageous Church to do ministry. Okay? We need new chairs for the sanctuary, and that's going to be a big deal as well. well. We'll need to buy those as well. We need signage on the outside of the building because we need to be able to identify that building as Courageous Church. Hello, somebody. 
We need some additional production gear, lighting, and installation. So those things, don't, those things don't just happen automatically. You don't just walk into a building and just put stuff up. You actually have to have professionals that are going to do that kind of stuff for you. The best part about it is, is that we've been such great stewards of our stuff that we can use most of our gear that's here. We get to take our lights and hang them from the ceilings. We get to use our speakers and our sound system, our equipment. We don't need those things. God has blessed us to be great stewards so that stuff can transfer on over. But we do need some other things. We need... We need, we need uh, all the stuff to hang it on. We need curtains behind the, 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 the staging. We're going to need a new stage because this one's going to be probably too tall for that room. So we'll need to bring the stage down a little bit. And so those are things that we're going to need to do. We're going to need to hang our speakers from the ceilings and, 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 and a lot of different things of that nature. And then the last thing is we need upgrades to the AC units. And so those are already being negotiated and talked about and it's already uh, in motion. So God is doing those things and he's moving those things in motion. And so let me show you what the the finished product of this room is going to look like when we get it where it needs to be. Let's go to the next slide. So this is a back, this is an overhead shot of the sanctuary. And so I want you guys to see this. This is, uh, this is the stage here over on this side. This stage that you see here is 24 by 16. So this is about the size of our stage here in that room currently. And so I don't know that we'll need this much stage, but this is what the stage will look like in the room. And so it has enough space for us to do what we need to do. The best part about it for me is that there's no confidence monitor on the ground. Why is that important to me? Because I'm a pastor who believes in altar calls. So that, <laughs> so that means now that our, now our confidence monitor will be back on this wall for the worship team to see on the wall instead of on the ground. Uh, the, where, the, where you see the stage start at right there, that's where the current room stops. And so we're expanding into that room 12 to 15 feet so that we can get the room we need to be able to fit the seats into the room. You see about 225 chairs here in this room all together. We have to knock out a wall that's on this side that actually separates things there. The restrooms will be up to the left corner where you see in the restroom area up there. Uh, 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 we have different spaces for things to go in. As you guys can see, we got a soundboard right here in the middle. We've got our slider camera on the big one there. We got the regular camera on the small, and we have our production team in the back on the wall set there. We have to put this wall in because it doesn't exist, and if we don't put that wall in, then every time the door opens, we'll get bright light into our room while we're trying to worship. So we can't have that, so we're going to build a wall that's right there on that, on that surface. Uh, another thing is, is the kids' ministry space is very sufficient. It was one of the, one of the things that was most attractive about this uh, particular space because the kids' ministry space is about the same size, uh, square footage-wise, as the sanctuary. So we have kids' ministry on the other side of this wall up that way. Go to the next picture for me. This is the back shot of the sanctuary where we'll have, and this is actually, this, this, the space in the back is much bigger. As you walk in here, you'll see we'll be able to do our coffee barista and different things in the corner. You'll be able to come in. There'll be a big space here for people to hang out in the sanctuary, moving in and out. And then when you see here over to the left, this is where we'll go to sign our kids in. And that area is safe and secure where no one can get in except our team and uh, we'll have safety and all that stuff where they should be. Next picture, please. And so this is a back shot to where you'll be able to see in the room and what it'll look like once we get it set the way that we need to. As you can see, our speakers are anchored in the ceilings there up off the ground, so it gives us more room to do physical ministry. And so that's all very, very good and amazing. Let me give you the blueprint shot as well so you guys can see every detail of it. And this is what it looks like so you guys can kind of understand where we're moving to. And so this is really neat. Uh, we're working to make sure that we keep to this design as much as possible. You should see your pastor fighting for more square footage every week. I mean, I'll be, I'm, I'm in there talking to them, hey, man, we, can, can we get that can, six feet? Come on, man, six feet. Can we? I, no, come on, six feet for the kingdom. Come on, brother. <laughs> yes. And so, so this is great. And, and this, is, this is our next home. It's not our permanent home. This is a home where we're going to be leasing for three years. So we get to be in a place where we don't have to think about moving for at least three years. 
And so this is a beautiful thing for us right now. We lease this place and we lease the place next door for a kids ministry. And we, we're, leasing, we're leasing space for, uh, we're renting space for, for meetings and storage and all types of things. So this building is going to give us the ability to take ministry to the next level. And all of the things that I told you about before, we get to do that at Courageous Church. Who's excited? So here's the bigger part. Here's the biggest part, and this is where we all come in at. Can I get one of those cards? Can somebody give me one of the cards? Just give me one of those real quick. Give me one of those. Perfect. Thank you so much. So, so here, is, here is the price tag that we need to raise as a church. We need to raise $60,000 in 60 days. Now, that's not, that's not impossible. That's not, that's not crazy. God has done much more and less time for some of us, and we've seen God do great things already in Courageous Church. When we needed to, when we needed to launch this church, we needed $360,000, and God blessed us with that money so that we could be debt-free as a church and be able to do church. And, and so we were able to do that already. We've already seen God do that. And so in the next 60 days, what I'm asking of our church is give me some music up here. This, this will sound a little bit better with some music behind it. Give me some music. Come on now. I'm asking for money. I need music. Music and money go hand in hand. You got, oh, look at that. Michael said he's got a thousand. Let's go. We, hold on. Listen, listen. Let, let me correct this. We need $59,000 to be able to see God move. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Amen. Praise God. Hey, can I get these to be passed out really quickly? Amen. So listen, let me explain this to you guys. We need 60K in 60 days. And I don't know how it's going to come, but I know that God wants to build this church. Ah, I'm so emotional because I know that this is the will of God and this is the mission that God sent us to accomplish. In 60 days, they start construction on our site, beginning of August. We need to raise every bit of this 60K before then. And so this is what we need from you guys. We need you guys to join us in this commitment. My wife and I are giving. We're giving, we're giving big, okay? I want you to know your pastors are giving to this too. We're not asking you to do something we're not asking you to do too. And so this is what we're asking you guys. Read the back of this card. It says, how can you be a part of this vision? Prayerfully consider partnering with Courageous Church and raising the 60K in 60 days. I believe God's going to do this miracle. I, I have no doubt about God is going to do this. In, he might do it in less than 60. I told somebody today I wouldn't be surprised if God found a way to do this today in Jesus' name. And so I just believe that God is up to something at our church. And I believe that this vision needs to be moved forward faster. And I believe that you're the ones, we are the ones in this room to see this vision come to pass. Amen? Let me say this to you guys as you guys are looking at this. Uh, this is a pledge. It says, I pledge to give blank above my tithes and offerings by August 7th. August 7th is our due date for the 60K. But let me say this to you. The faster we get the 60K in, the faster we can get things moving. We've got gear to buy. Things are time sensitive that you got to get it. You got to get it bought before then. So I want us to move into the building when we move in with everything that we need to be done to be done. I don't want us walking in saying, okay, next week y'all going to see the paint go up. All right, next week you're going to see this go. No, 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 no. Let's get this place courageous ready and doing it the courageous way so that we can see God do something great on opening day. So let me share something with you. When I was a teenager, I was 15 years old. I just given my life to Jesus in, Ju in, in a July of, of 99. Um, in February of, nine, of 2000, Bishop T.D. Jakes, our senior pastor, started a giving campaign for our new building. It was called Hand Me Another Brick. This was an incredible campaign where he had, he had thousands of bricks to the left of the, of the uh of the stage and and anybody who who gave a thousand dollars you could you would have your name inscribed on a brick in the new chapel that was being put in the building and and that chapel would have elders that will be going in every week to be praying over these names on the wall of this chapel and so my mom, I, I, I watched us do something that was pretty amazing. I, we were, we, my mom didn't make a lot of money. We didn't have a lot of money, but, but we knew that once a year, we'd have a couple of thousand dollars. Y'all know what time that is. That's tax return time. So I'll never forget my mom. She was so excited to take her tax return and buy a thousand dollar brick. And, and let me say this. She didn't put her name on the brick. 
She put my name on the brick. Listen, not only did we sow a thousand dollars, but she sowed a seed into the future of the church. And let me tell you how crazy this is. Many years later, I was hired to be the young adult pastor at this same church. And guess what room we did young adult ministry in? In the chapel where the brick wall exists today with my name, Ontario Green, inscribed on that wall. I want you to know that every penny you give to help us build this church, it's not just for us. It's, it's for the next generation that's coming behind us. It's for the next giant killers who are going to come along and slay devils here in Tampa. It's, it's for the next building that we're going to build in the north, the south, the east, and the west because we need to see the devil on the run. It's for the next young person who, who won't be on CNN because he's in the church learning about the kingdom and learning about his purpose and the plan that God has for his life. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. And so... On this, you'll see a barcode. Take your phone, hang it over the barcode. This will take you to a special link that is just for an offering for this 60K. It's called 60K in 60 days when you scan it. And here's what I'm asking. And I mean this when I say it. I really would like every person in here to pray about what God would cause you to give. I've done some math. Math was my favorite subject. I, 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 I did some math, I said, if 60 people give $1,000, we got 60K. If, let me see, what else did I say? If 120 people give $500, we got 60K. If 240 people give $250, we've got 60K in 60 days. And so I've tried my best to break this down to every family and every level where we are. And all we're asking is in the next 60 days that if you could commit to giving this maybe more, or whatever the Lord puts on your heart to give. I just gave some quick math. You don't have to do this. I just wanted to show you math and how easy we could get there if we all come together. But I just believe that you're called to give something to help build the kingdom. And there is no gift that is too small. And praise God, there's no gift that's too big. The Lord touches your heart for your business to write a check to underwrite this thing for 60 grand. We can be done and ready to, to ready to take ministry to the next level. And here's what I'm going to do. I'll commit to giving you guys updates weekly on where we are on this 60K because I want to be accountable to you guys. Here's what Moses did. When Moses got ready to build the tabernacle, and I'm closing, God told Moses to take an offering amongst the people. And he said, I want them to bring silver, I want them to bring gold, I want them to bring brass, I want them to bring purple linen, I want them to bring string and not, uh, 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 particular types of wood. I mean, they had all types of offerings that they could bring. And so they begin to bring offerings. And the Bible says that they brought offerings at such an abundance that Moses had to tell them to stop giving. Moses had to say, hey, we got enough. Please, we have nowhere else to store all this stuff you're bringing. Stop giving. And I'll never say stop giving in Jesus' name. But I will let you know when we've reached our target. I promise you that. So here's what I'd like for you to do. I'd like for you to pray. I'd like for you to ask God what he would have you to give. Matter of fact, I want to pray right now because I just feel an anointing on this. I just feel like by the end of this day, we're going to see God do something crazy. I just believe that. I just believe God's going to do something, something supernatural because he wants to see his kingdom built. I believe he's got people in here that have hearts to see the kingdom built. I believe that there are people here that understand the vision. They can see it. They, we wrote it and we made it plain and we made it clear. And I just believe that God is going to send the provision for the vision. Father, I pray right now that you would send 60K to Courageous Church so that we can see the kingdom of God established, Father. I thank you for every penny, every dime that will be sown into this vision. I thank you, Father God, that you're going to cause blessing to come on every home. Lord, I thank you for Matthew 6 and 33 that says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's what we're doing here. We're, we're seeking the kingdom. And I thank you, Father, that your word declares that uh, whatever needs they have need of, Father God, you're going to meet those needs. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto them. 
So, Lord, I pray that whatever need they have, whether it's peace, whether it's joy, whether it's their babies need to be saved, whether their marriage needs to be rescued, Father, I just thank you that the seed that they're sowing into the kingdom today, God, you're going to cause something to manifest as they see your kingdom come, as they see your kingdom built, and as they give towards your kingdom. I bless you and thank you that you're going to make sure their house and their needs are met. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Did everybody get one of these? I want, listen, I'm serious. I want every single one of us to have, even the babies, get a baby's one too. Babies, the the Lord might touch a baby's heart. Mommy! Every seed counts. Every penny matters. We're going to knock this goal out and we're going to see God do something great in this next chapter of Courageous Church. So let me tell you, and let me tell you, uh, if, if, if we can do this quickly, we can move the vision we can move the vision even faster. And so what that means is we can be on track to be moving into our new building. Uh, now, construction can change from time to time because of weather and because of things that are being ordered. So, so don't hold me to this, but I will say early fall, very early fall, we could be moving into our new facility. So we're looking at just a couple of more months here in this facility. And we're going to be good stewards of this facility while God still has us here. But I just believe that the vision can move forward faster with all of us giving towards this. Amen? How many of you commit to praying? Can you pray about this? Can you pray? Can you pray? Amen. Pray about it before you write an amount and before you click that that link to give. We just believe that God's going to do something amazing. Please don't use your tithes and offerings to do that. Your tithe is is set aside for the Lord. That is his. It belongs to him. You give that back to him because he gave it to you. And that's what we give to him. It belongs to him. But anything above our tithes and offerings, let's do that to make sure we see the kingdom established here in Tampa. Amen. Oh, man, I love it. Hey, worship team, can y'all do me a favor? We got a couple of minutes. I just want to hear some more Build Your Church. I don't know where y'all are. I don't know where you are. My daughter's here. Somebody come up here. Give me a drummer. Give me somebody up here. I just feel the Spirit of God on this thing. And as we get ready to leave this building today, I want us to sing this church, this song together. And we're going to commit to building the church together. And so this is why we're singing it, because we're all committed to doing that. If, if you have a physical gift, if you have a physical check, I know some of you guys do that. Physical cash, you can give that on the way out of the door. We'll have that at the, uh, at, at the door to make sure you can do that. Do we have envelopes? Do, or are we out? Thank you. Let's make sure we get those ordered this week because we have people in this room that are ready to write million-dollar checks in Jesus' name, and they need to be able to account for their giving in Jesus' name. Yes, amen. I make no excuses for that. You know what? I believe that God's going to cause me to write a million-dollar check one day for the kingdom. I believe, come here, my brother, come here. This is my brother, Kevin. Kevin and his wife, we had the opportunity. Come on up, worship team. Y'all go ahead and get in place. This is my brother, Kevin. His beautiful wife is here and his children. They, I think they're in kids' ministry. This man is courageous, too. When are you building your church? Port Charlotte. That's, that's right down the way in Florida. And we had the opportunity to do their evaluation through ARC to make sure that they were ready to build. Did we, did we stress you guys out? <laughs> they're ready, though. They're equipped, they're ready, and they're building their team, and the kingdom is being established there as well. And I just prophesy right now that the same provision that, my God, I believe the same provision that God released on Courageous Church when it was time for us to build and establish His church. I just believe right now in the name of Jesus that that same anointing, that same provision, that same favor, those same business people, those great meetings, those unexpected miracles, those unexpected checks in the mail are going to come so you can build the church that the gates of hell would be torn down and Port Charlotte. In the name of Jesus, I pray provision over your family. I pray safety over your children as you build the church that God called you to build in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, team. Everybody stand to your feet. We're going to end this service a little different. We're going to say build your church. Come on, do that. Come on, sing that out. Come on, you can do it. Let me hear your voice. Build your church. From the ground, we your church, build your church, build your church, build your church.
into your marvelous light that this is the generation that will seek your face this is the generation that's going to build your church we're going to see a great awakening in our city because of what is being sown over the next 60 days we're going to see the gates of hell close just a little bit we're going to see 80 percent come down just a little bit as we commit to building your church and Lord, I speak blessings over every soul in this room, over every person watching online. I thank you that safety and provision is over them. I pray that you would guard their children on the left, the right, the front, and the back. I thank you, Father God, that every need they have need of this week, Father, that you're going to meet that need according to your riches and glory. And I thank you that as they seek ye first the kingdom of God and your righteousness, that you're going to cause all things, all things, all things, to come in their direction. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Somebody shout amen. We love you guys. Courageous Church. We'll see y'all next week. George.